Ladies and gentlemen, the voice of FTC welcomes you, the Associate Dean of Aviation, Bridgewater State University, the one and only David Price. No way! You guys sit down. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Oh man, we had an absolute incredible couple of days. I can't believe that on the first day we got through 93 matches. You guys were awesome! Wow! How is this year's competition? Good? Very good. Tic-tac-toe, connect four for smart people. We like that. All right, this is gonna be a really, really fun afternoon. We've got some awesome guest speakers, fantastic awards to pass out to everybody. And first, we have an incredible person that's gonna say a few words. I have a little bio on him. Our first guest this afternoon, he is 100% organic, never pasteurized, never homogenized, antibiotic free, no growth hormones, no, no growth hormones, no steroids, and ladies and gentlemen, this man is free range. Let's give it up for the one and only Dr. Woody Flowers. Thank you, Dave. It is wonderful to be here. I love FTC. I know you guys are shifting mental gears, and I hope most of that has a warm feeling and a congratulatory feeling, but I want to go back and make one point about the season that uh, I don't think we play up enough. You've just participated in a really big experiment that doesn't happen very often. You have seen either directly or on the web or indirectly, 2,500 solutions to the same problem. That's a big deal. It's a great learning opportunity. So if you don't do something a little bit formal about acknowledging that, you miss a chance to not just learn, but kind of learn about learning, kind of look back. And many years ago when we started doing these design competitions at MIT, we, we figured out that students wanted to say something at the end of the semester after the competition was done. So we started having one lab session in which each student on one sheet of paper and sort of in a lighthearted way at the top of the page it would say, if you won, why? If you didn't, why not? And that was a, a great way for them to sort of explain to the professor, but really to themselves, what had happened. You should think about doing that, if you don't already, to the season, your interaction with teammates, the robot itself. You, know, you walked through the pits and you saw things and said, you know, we thought about that, but we decided maybe not. So close the loop a little bit. And I won't belabor that anymore because I know you, you're in party mode. So I, when I spoke to you at the beginning of this competition, I said that Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you tell them. They will even forget what you do to them, but they will never forget how you make them feel. I hope this event has made you feel really good. And I'm really encouraged that the non-robot parts of FTC are getting much more competitive. I believe that learning about yourself in the context of the team and society and your community is one of the biggest learning opportunities in FIRST. So I congratulate you on expanding that. I look forward to you guys propagating that culture throughout the years to come closing the loop, creating teams of your own. Thank you. Congratulations on a great season. 
Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, before we get tired, you guys have been screaming for the last couple of days. We gotta do some really big last minute cheers. So first and foremost, judges, let's all give them a big round of applause. You guys were awesome. Stand up, judges, stand up. All right, good. Keep that light bright. Now let's single out our field technicians, gentlemen in the safari shirts. You guys stand up. And while they're managing their safari zebras, you guys stand up. What makes this event work is, a, and you know this, you've heard it, it's the thousands and thousands of volunteers that get paid nothing, the people that take vacation days and sick days from work to come to this event, your parents and mentors, the same thing. I took three sick days. <coughs> I'm actually not lying. Shh. My wife thinks I'm an insurance convention too, so it doesn't matter. So. But we also have some people in the room, they shell out a whole bunch of resources. And I'm not talking about the financial resources only, because that, that's a big part of it. But it's the human resource that they put into these teams. And yeah, they might be going out to recruit the next generation of engineers for their corporations. But guys, that's not a bad thing. That's a win-win. That's synergi synergistic. Okay, they're getting engineers, you're getting to work for a great company, and we have a whole bunch of them. In fact, this year, we have one of our many remarkable companies that's gonna be here on stage in a few minutes, and that's Rockwell Collins. And to show them, let's do a little video clip on them. Our next guest has an incredible job. 6,500 engineers report to this person. That's like herding a million cats. She does it well. She's the executive vice president of Rockwell Collins for engineering and technology. Let's give it up for Nan Matai. Nan. Good afternoon, everyone, and hello. Congratulations on a tremendous three days. This was my first time uh, experiencing FIRST, and I was blown away by the high energy, the excitement, the intense competition. Even with 6,500 engineers, uh, you would think I've seen it all, but I did not. That was just fabulous. And congratulations to all of you for having made it to St. Louis this year. This is our fourth year as the FTC program sponsor. And during these four years, the number of teams has more than doubled, growing from 1,100 teams competing the first season to 2,500 teams this year. In Iowa, Rockwell Collins' home state, We had 101 teams competing this year, 
up from 22 our first year. Tremendous progress. Our goal is to have FTC in every high school in Iowa. And if we can replicate that growth across the country, we may need the entire Edward Jones Dome just for the FTC finals. Imagine that. At Rockwell Collins, we believe in the importance and power of an education, which, which includes science, math, and technology. But learning is not just about books and formulas. It's about hands-on experience. And that's why Rockwell Collins is proud to have supported FIRST for more than a decade. We started by running a first LEGO League tournament in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and grew to support teams across Iowa, into California, Florida, Texas, Oregon, and Virginia. This season, we provided grants to more than 250 first teams. as well as tournament sponsorships. All in, our financial support of FIRST totals $1 million. <laughs> but it's more than about the money. We have also provided people power. Nearly 250 employees and retirees have logged more than 4,000 hours as first mentors and tournament volunteers. In fact, over the last two days, eight of our employees have volunteered just at this event. Also supporting this event is the president of Rockwell Collins, Kelly Ortberg, who came down yesterday with me to have an opportunity to meet many of you. Kelly, please stand. We are especially proud to be the official program sponsor of the First Tech Challenge for the fourth year. And I'm very pleased to announce we have just committed to three more years. We hope that you've all had fun participating in the FTC final competition. And while you were doing that, we also hope that you've learned the values that First and Rockwell Collins believe will be essential later in life. Values like teamwork, creative thinking, good sportsmanship, and finding and pursuing your passion. If you love what you do, you will always be happy. There's one more value I would like to recognize. It's innovation. Rockwell Collins is the sponsor of the Innovate Award given out at every first Tech Challenge tournament. The whole concept of FTC is about innovation. You've got a challenge, you've got a box of parts. By working together and using those parts, you develop the solution. And your solution might look different from everyone else's. Actually, it may even look crazy. And that's OK, because what is important is the learning that you took away from that experience. So in closing, I'd like to thank you for joining Rockwell Collins and everyone here at US First. 
thank you for demonstrating those values I just talked about. And most of all, thank you for getting me out of the office. All of us need to recharge our batteries at some point. And for me, there's no better way to do that and to get excited about the future than to see the great potential in all of you, our young people, the future of tomorrow. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nana. Okay, teams, you want to go into science, technology, engineering, math? Yeah. Do you want to go into STEM? Yeah. yeah. Well, instead of having a person that's been working in an industry for 10 or 20 years to tell you how important it is, we thought we'd have someone a little close to your age. This person was actually the FTC Alliance champion last year. So if you're a veteran, you may know who this team was. They were on the team called Global Force. They were a force to be reckoned with, like the forces we had today. He might look like he wants to be a chimney sweep, but he's an electrical engineering student at USC. Let's give it up for John Fogarty. I can't tell you how much it means to me to be sitting in the room with all of you. This is my favorite program. I'm one of those kids who went and started out in FLL, went to FTC, and then finished in FRC. So I wanted to share a quote with you. It's a quote that's meant a lot to me, and it was shared to me with my, from my dad. It comes from the Army Corps of Engineers, and this is how it goes. We can accomplish the hard things right away, but the impossible just takes a little while longer. And all of you, you're familiar with this. The hard things, you just built a robot to compete in a challenge over the last six months, and now you're here today, competing with the rest of the world. And the impossible task, like Dean came and said to us last night, at, uh, or this morning, at opening or yesterday at opening ceremonies, <laughs> is we have to change the world. We're the best kept secret of the entire world. And I want to tell you about my story being a First Tech Challenge competitor. I started in 2008, face off. It's a pretty hard game. I was a freshman, kind of an awkward kid, ADHD, didn't really talk to people that much. I started out as the team programmer. I sat in the corner of the room for a couple hours every day programming, debugging code in Robot C. Pretty exciting stuff, let me tell you. <laughs> so we went to our first championship event. We did pretty well. So well, in fact, it was the first time our team had ever qualified for Worlds that year. And so, we went on to World Championship. But along the way, I met some team members who needed help programming. And I had never helped anyone else before with stuff like that. So when I went and helped them, it gave me this sense of pride that I had actually achieved something for someone else. And it gave me this feeling that I wanted to do more of that. The next season, after we had gone to World Championship one time, our FRC mentors decided, hey, this FTC thing, it's a great thing. We should do more of that. So we expanded from one team to five. This is the beginning of FTC Global Force. It used to be named G-Force, but we respected the team out there, named the same name, and changed it. So we decided that year to start a new team, and they decided to put me in charge of a team of all rookies, kids who had never touched a power tool in their lives. That year, 2010, we went from state and lost. Went to the next state championship after working hard hours and hours and won undefeated in Tennessee. Came here and with the friends from Maryland and friends from Florida, went to become the championship alliance. Now, that's a Cinderella story. A lot of teams don't have that opportunity to have some success happen to them in one season. But I want all of you to take something back from this. When you go home today, I want you, and whenever you do go home, I want you to take what you've learned here. I want you to build upon that. I don't want this experience that you've had here at Championship to end here today. I want you to take it and build upon it. 
You've already completed the hard thing by coming here and competing. I want you to go and tackle that impossible task that Dean came and told you about. We need to change the world, and you are the beginning of that change. Thank you. John, John, you can go this way if you want. Great job, John Fogarty. FTC is a family, we know that. That's what makes us great. We don't have politics, we don't have too much infighting. Actually, we have almost no infighting at all. We're a happy group of people, but it's happy because of the directorship that it's under. This person works tirelessly at the global headquarters up in Manchester, New Hampshire, as a director of FIRST, and he has a superpower. Remember we talked about superpowers the other day? His superpowers are his incredible sideburns. They are amazing. He likes it when you touch them. Let's give it up for the one and only Ken Johnson. Everybody get up. Come on, I'm just... Everybody get up. <laughs> Nowhere else but FTC. Ah, here we are again. I think that someone asked for a raise of hands at the opening ceremonies of how many people were here last year. Can I have another quick raise of hands? How many people were here last year? Wow, that's a big number. That's a good number. Um, I did this a couple of years ago too, but I really love the energy in this room, and I just I would love to just soak it up and smell it in. And that smell is good energy, by the way. <laughs> but if you tried to reproduce the energy of the karma or the intelligence or the stewardship of first and the values, you couldn't do it in any other format than what we've done here. And it's really been a byproduct of this wonderful event and series of events that we've put together. So looking back on remarks from previous years and thinking through what I wanted to get across today, I realize that there's a little bit of a cadence that we've followed uh, in terms of what I've left you with at the end of the season. Um, and the first thing and the most important thing is to thank you again. And everyone's been thanked in different groups, but I think that um, one thing I'd ask you to indulge me with is uh, to let me just give a special thanks to the first staff. Um, as you probably know, we do this with seven full-time employees. So that is even more of a nod to all the volunteers we have because there's no way that we could do this. But the first folks that we have back home work tirelessly. And I'd like to thank Athena Damdunas, Thomas Eng, I see you. Tim Huffman, two M's. Nancy Paul. We have a lot of wallflowers in FTC, contrary to the volunteers that we have. And last but not least, here with us, Joanne Halloran. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the two folks that we left behind this year back home, Mary Lee and Lori Russell. So the other thing that I often mention at the end of the season is for some reason or another, I got into this mode of kind of thinking of what we do in a, a different context. Um, I believe it was last year we kind of talked about the evolution and the generations that have come before us and how the last four generations really have more technology at their hands than any other generations before even accumulated. And that gives us a great deal of responsibility. What I want to leave you with here today is another way to look at the journey that we've been on. A lot of you raised your hands, you were here last year. Um, some of you probably have been with FIRST uh, and FTC uh, specifically since we started. Uh, you all got involved for one reason or another because this attracted you. And at one level or another, it was the mission of FIRST. And the mission of FIRST, of course, is to change the culture and inspire the next generation of technology leaders and technology heroes. Well, in 2005, FIRST started FIRST Tech Challenge as a pilot program. And those of you that remember, and many of you do, we were a 
kit of parts that was provided to the FRC team so that they could prototype and better build their FRC robots. And that quickly evolved into com competition with the, with the smaller FTC robots. So at that point, we were kind of a scrappy group and we were trying to get some attention. Um, we seemed to fit that nice space between first Lego League and first robotics competition. And the market really spoke and the program grew. If you recall in 2007, enough people took notice that first sanctioned FTC as an official program. At that time, I think we had about uh, 700 teams. We're still the scrappy newcomer, right? It was easy to grow then. You can grow 200 teams and have pretty good percentage growth over a 500 team season the year before. So we were that scrappy group and we were able to share a lot of the resources with the other, with the other programs and they helped us a lot. Hopefully as we've been able to help others that come after us. But here we are in 2013. And those of you that were here at the opening ceremonies heard Dean mention that we are now bigger in terms of number of teams than FRC. I think we should take a moment to recognize that. That's, that's an important step, an important milestone that we've reached. <laughs> the people in the room here and many others that can't be here all made that happen. But we're no longer that scrappy upstart. We have the best sponsors. We have, I think, among the best volunteers, not only within FIRST, but within the world. You've all seen firsthand and you've all been part of that. But with that, actually brings more responsibility. You heard Dean, those of you that happened to be at the, um, the showcase dinner right here last night, heard him talk about you know, the 20 to 25 years, however you want to cut it, that it's taken to get to this point. And in some ways, we really created this tribe that has this wonderful energy, this wonderful drive. And the quote that I would butcher if I tried to relay it verbatim about small groups of people changing the world is certainly apt. But we're no longer that small group within FIRST. We're a group within FIRST that has the best opportunity of all the FIRST programs, I believe, to really effect that mission of FIRST, and that is to change the culture. Because the way that we're going to do that isn't only by a strong band of really driven people, but that strong band of really driven people bring others into the fold. And that's what we're doing. If we look at how we change the culture, we need more people like you involved. And the types of things that we're able to do right now and the things that we're experimenting with will make it such that, like Iowa, we should be able to be in every single school that we want to be in, in the United States and around the world. Yeah. So the things that we want you to pay attention to and the things, because there's a million things flying around and we're all going into a little bit of, a, of an off season, um, as much as that exists, but the things that I want you to be aware of are the things that we're moving towards to make it easier to hold the first events, to make it more recognizable, to recognize those coaches and volunteers that get involved, to highlight those kids, like the gentleman that was just up here that go on to do wonderful things, not just two years out, but five years out, 10 years out, 20 years out, and we're doing that. But what I want us all to be able to do in the next year or two is to be able to go back to our communities, talk to the schools in our district, and I want us to be able to show them exactly what it's all about to be in FIRST, and specifically in FTC. And if you want to start talking about life skills, you want to start talking about scholarships, if you want to start talking about going pro in any extracurricular activity that you might have, then FTC is the thing to do. And if we do that, and we will do that, we will finally realize that mission of FIRST. I need your help. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time to pass out some awards. I need some help, though. I can't do a million high fives. Judges, could you guys please come up? Let's give it up for the judges. There are yellow pieces of tape up here on the stage. I need 10 people on each piece of tape. No, I'm not, I'm not laughing, I'm serious. <laughs> All right, we're gonna pass out some awards. I'm gonna come down off the stage for just one second. And the awards are gonna look like this. When you get an award, come up the middle aisle, come up the side aisles, work your way over to this side of the field, 
and then go up the staircase on this side. You're gonna run across the stage and do high fives because we're gonna then start to introduce the next team that wins an award today. I said 10 per piece of tape. Yeah, this is going to be a group spoon, guys. <laughs> it's mostly engineers. Wait, you, I thought my mic was off. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, good job to the judges. Uh, fewer judges might solve the problem. Just saying. Hey, we had some fantastic competition this morning. When I say Thomas, you say Edison. Thomas. Thomas, Benjamin. when I say Frank, when I say Benjamin, you say Franklin, Benjamin, Franklin. Benjamin, Franklin. all right, and combined, you guys make Da Vinci, but we didn't have those two good divisions today without some really hard work. So first, let's welcome up to the stage the division finalists from the Edison playing fields, the Edison division. Let's give a big round of applause, and you guys going to come up. You're gonna come up to the stage on this side, you're gonna grab a medal and go across the other side. Let's give it up for the Edison Division finalists and they are team number 4220, the Landroids from Livingston, New Jersey. And their alliance partner, team number 4102, CHS Cougars from Maplewood, New Jersey. And rounding out the powerhouse from Edison, let's welcome Team 3485, the Peeps from Flint, Michigan. It actually does work. The division finalists from the P Franklin Fields of Franklin Division. Let's welcome team number 4530, Infinite Resistance from Cincinnati, Ohio. And their alliance partners, team 4546, Snake Bites from Austin, Texas. And last but not least, rounding out the Franklin Division finalists, team number 3531, Short Circuits from Portland, Oregon. Says 93 down at the deposit and guarantee with that swimming hole. It's nice and cold. Bikini bottoms underneath, but the boys' hearts still skip a beat when them girls shimmy off. Them all cut offs. And it's two bad feet on the dashboard. <laughs> Thank you.
And now for the first of our judges' awards. This is a judges' award that was titled the Responders' Award. This judges' award is given at the discretion of the judges to a team that have encountered uh, unique efforts, performance or dynamics, merit recognition, yet the team does not fit into any other of the existing award categories. And this is called, again, the First Responders' Award. Here's what the judges have to say about the winner of this award. Judges would like to recognize a very energetic team for their proactive effort in giving a helping hand to fellow teams which are in need of assistance. They have come to the rescue of several teams on many occasions throughout the year. At this World Championship, this was the first team to respond to aid to the Russian teams when they were in a difficult situation helping to jumpstart their robot ready for competition. We congratulate this team for the amount of energy they expended helping their fellow teams and epitomizing that term, gracious professionalism. The First Responders Award this year goes to team number 3539, Say What, from Edison, New Jersey. Come on up. Yeah, they're working their way up. Do you hand that to me? One more time. Take your time. <laughs> One more time, we're yeah. gonna celebrate. Oh yeah, all right, don't stop the dancing. One more time, we're yeah. gonna celebrate. Oh yeah, all right, don't stop the dancing. One more time, we're yeah. gonna celebrate. I have been dying to say that team name for the last three days. I was so jealous that they were on the Franklin Division and not on my side. <laughs> I'm glad you guys won an award for that. Got to say it. Otherwise, I just say it by myself and people think I'm crazy. Our next judge's award is called the March to the First Beat Award. First being first. The judge's award is given at the discretion of the, oh, I already gave that, I'll say it again. The judge's award is given at the discretion of the judges to a team they have encountered whose unique efforts, performance or dynamics, merit recognition, yet the team does not into, to fit into any of the existing major award categories. And so here's what the judges have to say about this team. This team's first time at the Worlds gave them chills. Their school heralds them as stars of the newest national sport, the sport of the mind. This team is driving first growth in the entire country. The March to the First Beat Award is given the team number 3981, the Gold Griffins from Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. little piece of trivia about that team. Every single team member is related to Usain Bolt. <laughs> Our next award is sponsored by PTC. And to welcome uh, that award, let's bring up 
our senior, our, our senior vice president of global education. He is a terrific guy. He's not the John Stort on TV. He's the smart John Stort. John Stort, come on up and help give out this award. Everyone, John Stort. Wherever you want, just come over here. The intent of the PTC Design Award is to expand the challenge, inspiring teams to incorporate industrial design into their robots. These elements can be shown in the simplicity of the design as it applies to the tasks, the look and feel of the robot, and how the design allows us to think of robots in new ways. The design aspect must serve a function, but they should also differentiate the robot in a unique fashion. Not an easy task with a limited set of parts and a unique game challenge. The finalists, and there are six finalists for this year's PTC Design Award, the finalists are team number 3539, say what, from Edison, New Jersey, <laughs> team 3717, the Cyber Knights from Seattle, Washington, team 4140, Fish in the Boat from Lakeville, Michigan, team number 4211, the Bombers from St. Louis, Missouri, Team 4220, the Landroids from Livingston, New Jersey. And team number 4855, Batteries in Black from Portland, Oregon. And here's what the judges have to say about the winner of this award. Is this a poem? I believe it is. <laughs> it is. Okay, so now I say a poem, and you all scream. Ready? No, 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 no. That was, I was just telling the instructions. A poem. Though it seemed like ages and the design had many stages, only the fittest survived. Whenever, whether, whether on land or at the docks, this bot truly rocks. Its tough black skin, usually seen on a truck, has certainly brought this team good luck. This year's PTC Design Award is presented to team number 4140, Fish in the Boat from Lakeville, Minnesota. And now for the Motivate Award. This judged award celebrates the team that exemplifies the essence of the First Tech Challenge competition through team spirit and enthusiasm. This team shows their spirit through costumes and fun outfits, a team cheer or outstanding spirit, or through their collective efforts to make FIRST known throughout their school community. The six finalists this year for the Motivate Award are Team 3113, some disassembly required from Ellicott Mar uh, City, Maryland. <laughs> Team number 3485, the Peeps from Flint, Michigan. <laughs> Team number 3486, the Techno Warriors Advance from Brandon, Mississippi. <laughs> Team 4140, Fish in the Boat from Lakeville, Minnesota. Team 4347, the Nano Gurus from Morris Plains, New Jersey. And Team 5130, the Ahert Ravens from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And here's what the judges have to say about this year's award winner. This team's efforts transport us into another era. This team has shared a heart with, it, with their community. Quaff the Raven nevermore, nevermore. Will they be unknown? The Motivated Award this year is presented to team number 5132, the Ahert Ravens from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Come on up.
So we have a very special Rockwell Collins Award to give out this year. It's called the Innovate Award. And to help give out that award, let's bring back up to the stage Nan Matai, the Executive Vice President of Engineering Technology, and her teammate, the one and only president of Rockwell Collins, Kelly Ertz de Hortberg. <laughs> the Rockwell Collins Innovate Award celebrates a team that not only thinks outside the box, but has the ingenuity and inventiveness to make their designs come to life. This award is given to the team that the judges feel has the most innovative and creative robot design solution to the first tech, cha first tech challenge to any or all specific field elements or components. Elements of this award include elegant design, robustness, and out-of-the-box thinking with regard to design. This award may address the design of the whole robot or some subassembly component attached to the robot. The creative component needs to work consistently, but a robot does not have to work all of the time during matches to be considered for this award. The team's engineering notebook showed the design of the components and the team's robot and describes succinctly how the team arrived at that solution. The six finalists this year for the Rockwell Collins Innovate Award are Team number 3539, say what? From Edison, New Jersey. Edison, New Hampshire, I'm sorry. Wait, New Jersey. New Jersey. It actually says New Hampshire. Team number 3590, Ingenium from Pelham, New Hampshire. Team number 3717, the Cyber Knights from Seattle, Washington. Team number 4140, Fish in the Boat from Lakeville, Minnesota. Team number 4220, the Landroids from Livingston, New Jersey. Team number 5110, the Mechanical Monkeys Reloaded from, oh, I can't even say that name, Pekukoi, New Zealand. I didn't say it right. The team from New Zealand. <laughs> Sorry about that. And here's what the judges have to say about this year's award winner. This team has shown the ability to compete at a highly advanced level using, CAD design, using a CAD design bot. They were able to swerve their way through traffic and slip rings quickly into place. This team made custom parts that were 3D printed to solve their robot development challenges. The team's forward kinematics controlled arm makes this team's robot uniquely innovative. The Rockwell Collins Innovate Award is presented to team number 37, 30, 37, 17, the Cyber Knights from Seattle, Washington. Our next award is called the Connect Award. The Connect Award is presented to the team that, ju that the judges feel most connected with their local community and the engineering community as well. The best team is more than the sum of its parts and recognizes that their schools and communities play an essential role um, in the part of their success. 
The recipient of this award is recognized for helping the community understand first the first tech challenge and the team itself. In addition, the team that wins this award is aggressively seeking engineers and exploring the opportunities available in the world of engineering, science, and technology. The six finalists for the Connect Award this year are team number 3113, some disassembly required from Ellicott City, Maryland. <laughs> team number 3509, Fien Phoenix Tricks from Folsom, California. Team number 3550, Beta from West Des Moines, Iowa. Team number 3785, the Beastie Bots from Highland Park, Illinois. Team number 4082, Robo Spartans from New Hartford, New York. And team number 4220, the Landroids from Livingston, New Jersey. And here's what the judges have to say about this year's award recipient. Continuously sponsoring and mentoring multiple FLL and FTC teams, this team knows how to make it loud. How loud? So loud that their online resources help teams in India, Singapore, Malaysia, and Saudi Arabia, as well as their corner of the world. Their mission is to be the catalyst for a Northern California first explosion. The Connect Award this year is presented to team number 3509, Phoenix Tricks from Folsom, California. Come on up. That tonight's going to be a good night. Good. That tonight's going to be a good night. That tonight's going to be a good, good night. A feeling. That tonight's going to be a good night. That tonight's going to be song stop <laughs> our next award is called the think award the think award is given to the team that the judges feel best understood the, the role of the engineering notebook in the design process the engineering notebook is the key reference for judges to help them identify the most deserving team this team's engineering notebook focused on the design and build stages of the team's robot the finalists this year for the think award are Team 2753, Team Overdrive from Bridgewater, New Jersey. <laughs> team number 3539, Say What from Edison, New Jersey. <laughs> team number 3550, Beta from West Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> team number 4076, The Robugs from McDonough, Georgia. Team number 4082, the Robo Spartans from New Hartford, New York. And team number 4220, the Landroids from Livingston, New Jersey. This team's, oh, here's what the judges have to say about this year's award winner. This team's peachy key notebook left the judges feeling warm and fuzzy. Their design notes were so complete that another team could build the robot with only a few bugs. This team was definitely not exterminated by the competition. The Think Award this year is presented to team number 4076, the Robobugs from McDonough, Georgia.
So we had some really fierce competitions. I thought this year Edison was going to take it again like we did last year. And at the last moment, we just, we just, the other division won. And that's okay. Uh, I was talking to, I think I was talking to you yesterday. You know, there's something unique about first. Uh, I like sports. A lot of us like sports. We watch football seasons and baseball season, hockey and basketball, and other sports as well. But what first does is much different. When we watch a sport for a whole season, the drama, the opera is just drawn out. What you guys experienced in the last couple of days, in a sense, is an entire season condensed into three or four days. First, FTC, FRC, FLL, Junior FLO, these four things are like watching operas. And I think the last couple of days, you guys felt like watching these FTC matches. It was like watching an opera, was it not? It was incredible. So let's give a big round of applause for the Da Vinci Finalist Alliance. And if that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, you know this team as the Edison Division Champions for 2013. Let's give it up for team number 3717, the Cyber Knights from Seattle, Washington. And their alliance partners, team number 3846, Maelstrom from Tampa, Florida. And team number 4855, Batteries in Black from Portland, Oregon. You guys are awesome. We talked about that, right? And now to present the award for the FTC World Champion and the winner from the Franklin Division. Let's welcome back to the stage the one and only director of FTC, Ken Johnson. <laughs> this battle was hard fought. The Deserved Alliance won, we know that. You guys did a fantastic job. You fought through all of your matches. You were successful. If I'm not mistaken, I think somebody said that you guys had never lost a match. Is that true? Number one and never lost. Let's give it up to the FTC World Champions. Team number 4251, Cougar Robotics from Columbus, Ohio. Team number 4140, Fish in the Boat from Lakeville, Minnesota. And team 5096, Monkey Madness from Hampton Grove, Alabama. Wow. <laughs> I know you think that it ain't too far. But I, I hear a call of a lifetime ring. But the need to get up for it.
And now for the award that makes me cry. This is always tough to give out. This is our final award this afternoon. This is called the Inspire Award. The Inspire Award is given to the team that the judges felt truly embodied the challenge of the FTC program. This team serves as an inspiration to what this program and the young minds involved can accomplish. The team that receives this award has performed well in all judging categories and was chosen by the judges as a model first tech challenge team. The judges used match performance, observations during interviews in the pit area, the engineering's notebook, and performance on the playing field to determine this year's winner. The finalists for the Inspire Award are Team 3509 Phoenix Tricks from Folsom, California. <laughs> Team 3550 Beta from West Des Moines, Iowa. Team 3717, the Cyber Knights from Seattle, Washington. Team 4082, the Robo Spartans from New Hartford, New York. Team number 4140, Fish in the Boat from Lakeville, Minnesota. And team number 4220, the Land Droids from Livingston, New Jersey. And here's what the judges have to say about the winner of this year's award. This team really rings it up with all the judges. The notebook provided the details to recreate success. Red wasn't just a color, it guided their way. By creating a global web, they've made first loud. Let's give the Inspire Award this year to none other than, none other than team number 3550, Beta from West Des Moines, Iowa. Repeat after me. Mom and Dad, thank you for my DNA. Very good. Now everyone say, thank you, volunteers. Everybody, that concludes this afternoon's award ceremony. You are awesome, and we hope to see you again next year. Judges, thank you. You forgot the Game Design Committee. Can you have the Game Design Committee come oh, up for a high five? Game Design Committee, come on up. Everybody stay put if you can. Guys, let's thank the people that designed this year's challenge. Was it on the script? Good job, man. Yeah, it's all your fault. <laughs> Good job. Everybody, thank you so much. Be safe tonight. Enjoy the last night here in St. Louis. You guys are fantastic. <laughs>